everyone and welcome back to Mina Wonders. If it's your first time here, I'm Mina and this is a booktube channel. Um, three years ago, I filmed a video that was called a creative writing masters like is it worth it or not and i thought that i would do this video just because obviously our learning situation has now changed and the entire experience of taking your masters now is a little bit different than it was all those years ago and i figured that a lot of you guys might be interested in taking this time now to kind of uh upskill <laughs> to kind of pursue the things that you want and in case you're thinking about that i thought that this might be helpful for you guys just to kind of get a lay of the land and what it's like now that we've sort of shifted to this purely online learning medium. So I think I will start with the cons because chances are if you guys are here you'll probably be thinking of all of these things already and I will be giving you some of my thoughts. Back in my first video one of the things that I sort of specified or talked about that I wanted to get out of grad school was to be able to form kind of this circle of contemporaries or some people that I know would be as invested as I was in the craft that I was pursuing and these people could then of course kind of become a literary community and we could bounce ideas off of each other and that's definitely one of the major things that I feel like online learning and this pandemic has kind of taken away from us. So back in the good old days, me and my friends from grad school would kind of hang out after class. We would go to like Shawmai places, we would go to uh, milk tea places. There would be days when let's say we wouldn't have an in-session class where we would just go to cafes and kind of work on drafts together. And I feel like that's something that I really really miss and which I think was sort of a really really big part of my experience. So of course you could say that now everyone is on Zoom and in a way it's kind of more convenient because you don't have to leave your house and you guys can just kind of like Zoom hang out and I'm not sure if this is like telling of my age where yes that's fun but I feel like it's still different if you have a face-to-face -face interaction and I guess one of those things sort of points to the spontaneity that's involved. Of course if you're in Zoom you have to kind of set a time and everyone's busy, everyone's working or like busy with their own thing can kind of feel like something that you have to do or something that's been scheduled. Whereas school, I feel like, has this very spontaneous sort of element to it because all of you are going to classes but it's kind of a choice, right? If you're gonna go and hang out like during lunch break or before class or after class and I feel like that social component of it is just so damn important. Part of tying into that would be other immersive experiences which I feel have definitely suffered, have definitely taken a hit. Something I will say is like one of the great things about studying under people who are authors, who are artists, who are playwrights is that they're not like straight edge kind of very cloistered conventional people. These are the eccentrics of the world, you know? These are people who are actually paid to be creative. <laughs> and so one of the things I've always loved, especially in my workshop classes, is just how creative our teachers were when it came to organizing like culminating events, uh, workshops. We would go to like Hispanic era cafes sort of in the Bay Area and then we would go to uh, um, these sort of artsy-fartsy bars where you could hang out like in the Cafe Adriatico strip area and I just feel like those kinds of experiences make for bonding but they also make for creative stimuli which I think is very very important obviously if you're going to be pursuing creative writing and it just sort of helps put you in the mood you know to sort of generate these ideas to be inspired by all of the work that's come before you and I feel like that again sort of ties into the course content for example we have some courses on playwriting so we have playwriting techniques and we have playwriting workshops and in both we did a couple of sessions where we would forgo the traditional sort of classroom setting and we would go out and actually watch plays and for someone like me who has like no background whatsoever in playwriting except for a couple of musical theater workshops that i did as a kid that was super duper helpful for me because it sort of exposed me to that very visceral part of playwriting which is kind of different than watching it online because honestly if you're watching it online or you're watching it through a screen 
then the best sort of comparative medium for that would be something like documentary film, something like short film, short movies, filmmaking, so it's a little bit different. And of course, when we are in the academic setting, we always, always rely on research, we rely on credible literary criticism to sort of be the backbone of everything that we make and everything that we create, all the things that we use to sort of formulate our well-informed opinions. And I am telling you, <laughs> the Filipiniana databases are just crazy. By crazy, I mean almost non-existent. And even if you do find something, it's not well documented. It's not well scanned. It's incomplete. It's not in a PDF format that you'll be able to copy paste very easily. And mostly, the stuff that's online and available through these international journal subscriptions that the university has, like JSTOR, GVRL, the Princeton Encyclopedia of Poetics, all of that is sort of filtered through this veneer that honestly is not very Filipino-centric because it is international. So that Filipiniana touch of our beautiful sixth floor library that I swear if I ever get to walk in there again, I will never ever ever take it for granted. Like I love you Henry C. Building, I miss you so much, the Sip Banks is freaking real. Basically, there is a shortage of sources and that's something that's very difficult for me right now, especially since I'm beginning to review for my comprehensive exams and the comprehensive exam um, definitely covers like a lot of the Philippine canon. And sure, for some of the main canonical things, you can definitely find it online. There are a bunch of like PDF scans and stuff. But for the actual books, you will have to spend on that. You will have to buy those collections, those anthologies by Himino Abad. You will have to purchase those things out of pocket. And that's something that is just a little bit crazy for me, especially because I don't really see myself using those for anything else except study later on. And I guess you could split a copy with some friends, but then again, uh, if all of you guys need it at the same time, you don't have that photocopy power goodness that you had in the good old days. And last but not the least, I want to talk about scholarships. So like I mentioned in my last video, I am a 100% scholar at De La Salle, so thank you so much De La Salle, thank you forever for that. Um, and right now, it's kind of sad because they aren't accepting any new applicants for scholarships. And I can sort of understand that as well because obviously enrollments have suffered and they aren't making as much money as they used to make but they still have to pay for a lot of the operational expenses that keep the school running. Areas like the registrars, etc. like those offices that sort of keep things operational still have to be maintained. And obviously the security, the brothers are living there so you know there are a lot of costs involved. So I do kind of understand why they would want to sort of um, cap the scholarships and also they've also stopped taking upgrade requests for scholarships which is something that was very convenient before where if you get let's say a 50% or 25% scholarship um, you would have the option of requesting for a level up let's say to a full scholarship a couple of terms later so that's something that will not be available to you anymore so you will have to be paying the tuition term on term that said, I do think that there's also a reduction of costs though. So I checked out the university tuition table and I will leave a link in the description box because I'm sure you guys will definitely find that interesting. And right now, sorry, it's on the screen so let me just check. Okay. Right now for CLA, which is the College of Liberal Arts, we have 3,625 pesos per unit. Every term you have to take at least a minimum of 6 units to be able to qualify as like having a regular load otherwise you're sort of underloaded and that just kind of sucks because it means you can't apply for scholarships although I guess that's not really affected now but it does kind of affect your CGPA and the rate at which you are able to graduate so that leaves you at around 21,750 but with that there's still a couple of fees that you need to sort of um, integrate so no more lab fees, thank god. But what they do have now is a research supervision fee. And that fee basically um, goes to your professors, I think. And it basically goes to the effort that they have to put in now to be able to supervise whether or not you're doing stuff right. So that's around 5,745 pesos. So from the previous amount that was around like 21,000, you'd have to add around 5,000. Seven, four, five. So yeah, for 27,000 pesos per term, 
you are getting all of this stuff at a lower price than you would have before and you're not spending on transportation you're not spending on all of that delicious food that you would have consumed with your friends which sounds kind of sad but honestly if we're talking about things from like a convenience standpoint that's very convenient and next, uh, your mentors will definitely not ask you to print anything. So <laughs> that's something that kind of irked me back in the old face-to-face -face days, where we would be spending like 300 pesos every Saturday to print like a shitload of readings and to print all of these long-ass papers that we were writing when we were also submitting them in PDF form, which I really never understood. But like the academe back then was kind of obsessed with that, like doubling everything just in case something got lost. So that's a big sort of weight off your shoulders, especially if you are a working student and this tuition is something that you're saving up from scratch or that you're taking from your previous already existing savings. And along with that is this certain comfort of being at home. And I know this sounds kind of crazy, but I'm the kind of person who really, really likes to wake up dress up early, you know, kind of have like a slow morning so that when I get to school, I'm ready to go. I have like a long prep time. And so something that I realized lately is that I used to wake up at like 6.30 every Saturday to get ready for school, which would start at around 9 a.m. <laughs> Just because I wanted to have like that slow morning. And so that's one thing that's kind of good now. Um, you can have time to get comfortable and you can sort of set up your study area so that it's the most conducive for you. De La Salle classrooms have the AC cramped up to like, I don't know, negative something. And also something that La Salle has started offering lately um, are the student loans. So the Philippines is not really a student loan kind of economy, but I will say that in a country where this sort of student loan thing isn't really a thing because most people don't have sort of the credit to be able to pay. I feel like La Salle making an opportunity like this open for students at the master level is very, very useful because a lot of these people or incoming students are working. So if it's the kind of thing where you could pull together 27,000 for the first drop, but you're not quite sure if it's something that you can afford like every three months, then it might be something to look into where you could borrow for like let's say the remaining semesters of your first year and then slowly pay it back. Um, of course in accordance with the school's timetable but yeah I feel like that would be something very very useful for those people who do have some money saved up but it's not exactly enough to cover like the duration of your entire education. Okay. Um, second would be the lack of distraction. So <laughs> I mentioned earlier that my friends and I would hang out a lot like uh, at the Manila Bay area, etc. And of course I enjoyed that, but also a lot of the times we would just like food trip after class and a lot of the homework, we wouldn't really do it until the day before or like a couple of days before. So there are definitely less distractions I feel like when you're studying online. And there are some professors that sort of require you to turn on your webcam, at least for a portion of it or when you're reciting. So in that way, I feel like you do kind of have a safeguard against slacking off and you have less opportunities to slack off, honestly. And then of course, um, there is sort of the question of other materials that are now being made available for free. So La Salle recently kind of widened the number of databases that we can access and I'm definitely super grateful for that. And of course, a lot of teachers now have also learned to incorporate only free online material into their courses. So in that sense, it's very good because um, the curriculum and the professors have kind of adapted to this medium already. My adjustment them and that, in fairness. <laughs> Last but not the least, what I want to talk about is timing. So at my old job, I used to work for one of the premier colleges here in the Philippines and one of our deans said, something to me about this year and about the previous recessions that she has experienced and she said that one of the things that she's learned when the world slows down is that this is your time to level up and to upskill and so in that way timing is kind of in your favor if you're looking to study a master's in creative writing right now because it does put you in that place to become a specialist and it puts you in that place to level up and to increase what do you have on your resume, what you are capable of doing, or what you are qualified to teach while the world is slow. So right now, no one is hiring, but we are already beginning to get vaccines. Some businesses are beginning to open up. 
and I can sort of see it happening that in the next two years or so schools will probably be on the rise again and looking to recover and a lot of people will be sending their kids back to school and so those teaching jobs, those research jobs will probably be on the uptick in the next few years and with that a lot of people will be looking to upskill when that happens but by doing it now you kind of stay ahead of the curve and at that time you can be one of the first people that they hire. All in all, I would say that it really depends on your situation and your priorities. If currently, let's say you're unemployed or underemployed, and if what you're focusing on is really looking for a degree or a certification that will help you get a leg up and really sort of build a career right now in these dire times, then I would say it would probably be best to wait until the pandemic is over or at least more manageable or until you have that regular stream of income first. Like I would say the immediate upskilling opportunities are probably the best for you at this time. However, if you are employed right now and you have a steady stream of income and you're kind of more worried about whether you will be getting a good educational experience during this period, I would say just go for it. Um, it might not be as socially fun as it would have been back when it was face-to-face, -face, but you'll be missing out on the opportunity to kind of be qualified as we come out of this pandemic. I really hope that this video was helpful to you guys who are interested in taking your master's in creative writing. If you have any questions that I can help you out with, please just let me know in the comments below. And yeah, don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!